And joining us now from the Rural Fire Services headquarters at Homebush is the Premier, Barry O'Farrell. Mr O'Farrell, the RFS investigation has concluded that the largest fire, that's the state main mine fire, was sparked by exploding military shells. What can you tell us about that and do you expect the Defence Department to take full responsibility? Well, I can't add much more to what the Rural Fire Service and police have said, but I also want to ensure that this uh, doesn't detract from the efforts that Defence have made over the past week in assisting the state's emergency service battle these fires. Many people, though, have, have lost their homes, in some cases their livelihoods. Um, what, what do you say to them, that it was a, a terrible mistake that was made and what assistance can the government offer them? Well, I'm sure that uh, Defence, the federal government, will make some statements around that. But you know, what's important tonight, to Juanita, is that, yes, we've got through today because of some good planning and some great work by frontline firefighters, but none of us should relax because these fires are still alight uh, and we shouldn't relax till they're finally out. Premier Barry O'Farrell, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, overnight and this morning, they were coming down the mountains in their thousands, residents leaving their homes behind to escape the bushfires. One evacuation centre alone has had 2,000 people through its doors. And it's not only people that are looking for shelter. There's a major operation underway to house animals in danger. Jane Margetts reports. A lifetime crammed into the smallest of spaces. It's amazing how I can get my 52 years of marriage into, you know, that much, really. I think if it was just me, I'd probably hang around and see what happens, but I think it's just easier when you've got to pack everybody in the car um, just to go early. Not everyone has the benefit of a car, so they take what they can carry, not knowing if they will see their houses again. I've said goodbye. This might be the last time I see it. And I feel really sorry for the bush and the animals. And it's part of being here. Thanks to the RSPCA, animals are being given a temporary home. This sick foal at the Hawkesbury showground has a stomach full of ash. The big animals they can't get out and they don't tend to put them in their evacuation plants. And so they don't leave early enough. Not the case for Fred and Marie Egger, who've left their home along with two dogs, three rabbits, four birds and a very large cat. It's really scary that something may happen to them. Houses are replaceable but pets and people are not. And for all those who have come down the mountain, there are twice as many that need to go up. My theory always is New South always helps us out, so why wouldn't you reciprocate? A base camp for more than 800 local and interstate firefighters has been set up at the Penrith Leagues Club. As the wind picks up at the foot of the mountains, there's a sense of calm among firefighters. Those waiting to be deployed say they just want to get on with the job. We've been at it a long time, so it's, it's, not, it's not, a, not a new experience for us, really. I just want to get out and do something, sort of walk around here. And do something they will, but many are due for a well-earned rest. Jane Margetts, ABC News.